good day and welcome to today's episode of Bible study. We are trusting the Lord that his word will come afresh to us and will cause us to obey him even as we continue our discussion under the theme Covenant with the Living God. And our sub theme running for some time now is the Lord God of all nations. Last week we looked at God's preference for Egypt. Today we'll be looking at his preference for Babylon. We're excited. We have our resource persons in the studio whom God has prepared to help us consider this, his preference for Babylon. Seasoned Bible study teachers, I must add, by my left is Bro Gideon Arenze, the Bible study coordinator, St. James Anglican Church at Sukuru, here in Abuja Densis. You're welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. And then by my right is also Bro Goodwill Obwefi, also a Bible study teacher, St. James Anglican Church at Sukuru. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Our aims quickly will be to expose what ancient Babylon symbolizes. You know, most times you read the scriptures, you come around Babylon, when you look at the prophetic books, Daniel, uh, you look at Revelation, some allusions made concerning the city Babylon. What does it really symbolize in the scriptures? And then to further explain the choice of Babylon by God, those will be our aims as we discussed. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. We are trusting that this Lord that was manifested in the flesh, whom we will be preaching via this discussion today, will be believed by all of us and that his glory will shine deeply in our lives Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In our tradition, we would like to read our background text and I would like to read it from the New King James Version of the Scripture. Jeremiah chapter 27, 1 to 22 is a long verse and I would like to run speedily. I am reading from the New King James Version of the Scripture. In the beginning, of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord to me, Make for yourself bonds and yoke, and put them on your neck, and send them to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, the king of the Ammonites, the king of Tyre, the king of Sidon, by the hand of the messengers who came to Jerusalem to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and command them to say to their masters, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, those you shall say to your masters, I have made the earth, the man, and the beast that are on the ground, by my great power and by my outstretched arm, and I have given it to whom it seemed proper to me. And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beast of the field I have also given him to serve him. So all nations are serving, and his sons and his sons' sons, until the time of his land the camps, and then many nations and great kings shall make him serve them. Mm -hmm. And it shall be that the nation and the kingdom which will not serve the Bukadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and which will not put its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation I will punish, says the Lord, with a sword, the famine, the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand. Therefore do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your dreamers, your soothsayers, or your sorcerers, who speak to you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon. For they prophesy a lie to you, to remove you far from your land, and I'll drive you out, and you will perish. But the nations that bring their necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will let them remain in their own land, says the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell in it. I also spoke to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him and his people and live. Why will you die, you and your people, by the sword, by the famine and by pestilence, as the Lord has spoken against the nations that will not serve the king of Babylon? Therefore do not listen to the words of the prophet who speak to you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you. For I have not sent them, said the Lord, yet they prophesy a lie in my name. 
that I may drive you out and that you may perish, you and the prophets who prophesy to you. Also I spoke to the priests and to all these people, saying, Thus says the Lord, Do not listen to the words of your prophet who prophesied to you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house will now shortly be brought back from Babylon, for they prophesy a lie to you. Do not listen to them. Serve the king of Babylon and leave. Why should this city be laid waste? But if they are prophets, and if the word of the Lord is with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts, that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord, in the house of the king of Judah, and at Jerusalem, do not go to Babylon. For thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the pillars, concerning the sea, concerning the carts, and concerning the remainder of the vessels that remain in this city, which Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, did not take when he carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and of Jerusalem. They shall be carried to Babylon, and there they shall be until the day that I visit them, says the Lord. Then I will bring them up and restore them to this place. This is the word of the Lord. And Thanks be to, God. Be to God. God. Introduction quickly. Biblical writers often portray the ancient capital, Babylon of the Babylonian people, as the model of paganism and idolatry. That we can see in Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 54. Bro Gideon, you can help us read that scripture. And then in Daniel 4, 30, Bro Goodwill, you help us read that. That I will punish Baal in Babylon, and I will bring out of his mouth what he has swallowed, and the nations shall not stream to him anymore. Yes, the wall of Babylon shall fall. Daniel 4, 30. Daniel 4, 30. The king spoke, saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? <laughs> for the honor of my no place for God. The sovereign Lord being in control of all nations and who has authority over nations, based on his role as the creator of all, by his time in preferred Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, as his servant, by subjecting other nations for punishment under his rule. That we can also see in verses 5 to 8 of chapter 22, as well as in where we just read chapter 27. The question now is, why did the books of Isaiah and Jeremiah predict the downfalls of Babylon as God's punishment for them? Mm. Isaiah 44, 22. Chapter 43, verse 14, and Jeremiah 59, verse 9. You know, last week when we started looking at Egypt, God helped us on this mount to establish that to the extent that God preferred them, at a point, for reasons so adduced, God also kind of decapitated them. And so we are seeing the same scenario playing out, or we will be seeing the same scenario playing out here, that at a time in history, God preferred Babylon. We will look at perhaps why God made those choices. But also at a point, God also humbled that city. Why? Those will be the kernel of our discussions as we build together from this point. Bro Gideon, sir, I'd like you to help us address the first question before us. Explain your understanding of Babylon being God's preference over other nations. <laughs> The, the truth of the matter is that one cannot actually categorically yes, sir. say this is why God chose them. But if we look at precedents from scriptures, Romans chapter 9 verse 15, the Apostle Paul, while quoting Exodus 33 verse 19 in that scripture said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion of whom I have, I have compassion. compassion. In verse 16 of that scripture, it said, So it is not by human effort or mm, work. Of him that will let. It is only by God's mercy. mercy. We can look at it from that context. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go down that uh, Romans chapter 9, Apostle Paul spoke about his son Jacob. He said, Even when they were in the womb, God, God preferred Jacob. the younger. The younger will serve the older. Mm. The older uh, will serve the younger. The, the older will serve, serve the, the younger. younger. Mm. Thank you. And he said, does that mean that there is injustice with God? He said, no. Mm -hmm. So from that context, 
God can decide to prefer one. Awesome. Hmm. Now, we can also look at it from another context, that the Bible says that God knows all things. If we look at the life of Esau, using Esau now, mm. at the end of the day, we saw how Esau behaved. In, in Genesis chapter 25, 32, he gave away his birthright. Mm. So it is possible that God saw that kind of lifestyle early ahead, ahead knowing the way Esau will go hmm. and decided to choose the one that will run in righteousness. Hmm. It, is, it is possible. And if we continue, in fact, he did not even remember his birthright until Genesis 27 after the blessing. blessing. So Hebrews chapter 12 verse 16 warning us said, see that no one, none of you, will be sexually immoral or godless like Esau, Esau. which means God saw it. Hmm. That's the two contexts now. Yes, sir. One is by choice, God can decide. Another one is maybe he saw, you know, hmm. before hmm. time, hmm. how you will go like Esau went. So we don't really know why, but the point is that, like Bible said, a, an evil king is chosen for an evil time. The same way God can decide to choose a nation for whatever purpose he wants, he wants to, to achieve. He said, I have raised Pharaoh and had in his heart for a time like this, like that this. I will show my power through him. So mm. nobody knows the, hmm. but I think from that perspective, using scriptural precedence, we can say, okay, God decided out of his own volition to choose Babylon. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, these are some of, let me use the word, complexities in God that maybe people who are not deep students of the scripture will begin to struggle with. Mm -hmm. But no matter your struggle, God is God. God is God. Let's leave it at that as we share your thoughts. Yes. He, he, he's, he's laid the foundation. Babylon was chosen for a particular time. What was it chosen? To be a rod of punishment. To who? To God's people and all the surrounding lands. Of course, we will later see what, uh, what is the end of the rod of punishment. Mm. To some people, he called them the apple of his eyes. They became a light to the nations. To another, they become a tool of oppression, mm. a tool of a to exhibit the perfect example of wickedness. Hmm. And Babylon, God found in Babylon the ingredients to exhibit selfishness and punishment when God's people deviate. God raised them to do exactly what he wanted hmm. in the life of his children hmm. when they had derailed. Hmm. And God hmm. also gave Nebuchadnezzar ability to know him. Interestingly, Nebuchadnezzar is one of the few kings in the earth who was who had a personal experience with God? Because God also gave him warnings. God humbled him. God turned him back to repentance. One of the few cases in the Bible where you see a Gentile repent. But he was raised for a purpose. Hmm. And as we look at this scripture, we'll be looking at what is the end when you become a rod of punishment? Or are you going to be a tool for God's mercy? Hmm. A tool God will use to show mercy. There are nations today. When God wants to destroy a nation, God will raise that nation to destroy other nations. But there are also nations. When God raises them, they raise other nations. Nebuchadnezzar was the type of nation that God will use to scatter a, a, a whole land. Hmm. And then, to us, it's a lesson that God has his ways and they are very, very, very unique. Hmm. For me, I will call them dual roles. You can become a light to the nation. You can also be a tool for oppression, hmm. a tool for God to use to demonstrate the perfect example of what happens to somebody when he departs from God. And Babylon was a true example of what God used to show Israel that they had left him. Awesome. What God used to show Israel that they have left him. Have you left God? Have you left him? God will help us. I believe God is speaking to someone because when we begin to unbundle the context, the scope of what happened to Babylon, you begin to realize that in our lives, in our everyday walk with God, 
there are times that this spirit of Babylon begins to raise its head in our life and we need to watch it. Identify from the text, Jeremiah chapter 27, 2 to 22. We'll not read it again. Of course, I read it as I be granted. Mm. Babylon has God's preference over other nations, including the period of succession and the consequences of Babylon not submitting herself to God. I think he's triple barreled. Mm-hmm. We identify him, God's, pref- Babylon's, God's preference of Babylon over a nation. Mm-hmm. Let's also examine the period of succession in the land of Babylon. Mm-hmm. And finally, the consequences of Babylon as a city or as a spirit now, not submitting herself to God's fellowship. Bro, good way, sir. It's a very deep question. Yes, sir. We will try and do as much as we can. Babylon, God picked Babylon at a key moment in Israel. Israel had survived a very powerful empire, Egypt, and then half of Israel was taken into captivity by another empire called the Assyrians. Mm. The remaining vestige, the remaining part of God's promise was in Jerusalem. And that was the second part of Israel as a nation. And that nation was experiencing a backsliding moment. And in God's plan, Babylon was a rising empire, an empire built on self. And self will now manifest itself in idolatry and paganism. Paganism. The context, the settings were perfect. This was a a typical nation that that exhibited wickedness in its full entirety. The national god of Babylon was Madoc. And Israel was departing from the God they had worshipped and worshipped Baal and worshipped so many strange things. And God felt it necessary that as this empire was emerging, that he was going to set forth a warning. And in the days of Isaiah, he began to send warnings that Israel could go into captivity. And he began to speak of Babylon as a choice. Now, why did God pick Babylon? Probably because they were very, they were going to be a very important tool as a rod of correction. You know, God he wanted a, a country that would show Israel how far they had moved away from God. Yes, sir. And the key thing is, Israel had been tormented by Egyptian empire. Half of Israel had been taken to captivity by Assyria. God chose Babylon to completely destroy the remaining half. And in so doing, Babylon served a very key role in the demise of ancient Israel. And Israel went into captivity for 70 years under the influence of Nebuchadnezzar and then till the days of the Persians. When you look at those, the chronology I've just given, it speaks of a time when God's anger had led to a lot of things happening in the land of Israel. And when we look at Babylon as a nation, we see what God could do in a nation that had gone into backsliding. I would like you to stay there just before we go on break. Now, Babylon herself, what was the consequence, I would still like to stay with you, of Babylon herself not submitting to God? The consequence of Babylon not submitting was that Babylon destroyed herself eventually. God allowed Babylon to reach the full measure of wickedness. And wickedness in itself brings its own demise. The Bible says when God wanted to destroy the Hittites, he said, let the cup, the sin of the Hittites and the Canaanites, get to the full. And then... I will cause them to be destroyed. And he asked Israel to leave the Egypt, uh, the Egypt and then march into the, those lands and took them. Babylon's greatest weakness was that it was a wicked nation. Mm. And the, we can see that the full end of every wicked and oppressive regime, whether government in the modern time or in the near future, is that it will lead to your own demise. Self-destruct. Self-destruct. There is nothing that is built on self, idolatry, paganism, in other words, outside of God that lasts. 
I just wanted us to keep that in context. When we come back from the break, we'll continue this discussion. God bless you. What shall we render to God Almighty? The fruits of our lips are the music that brings down the praises of God on earth. The encounter of praise presents soul-lifting praises, sonorous hymns, classical and contemporary sounds that would uplift the name of God and bring down His presence for our awesome blessing. For the theme, The Fruit of Our Lips, from Hebrew 13.15, on the 12th of November 2021, at the St. Matthias House Auditorium, Apple Godo District, Abuja, by 4 p.m. West African time. Come, witness the glory of God in melodious, dynamic concept. Host, the Most Reverend M.C. Ndokoba, the Primate, Church of Nigeria and Lincoln Communion. Announcer, the Venerable Dr. Paul Dajo, the General Secretary, Church of Nigeria and Lincoln Communion. Welcome back. The Lord has been helping us thus far as we are looking closely into the scripture, the perfect law of liberty. Our topic today says his preference for Babylon under the sub team, the Lord God of all nations. And I have been in the studio with our resource persons, Bro Gideon Arenze and Bro Goodwill Obofi. Welcome to the program once again. Okay. Now we want to, before we move, jump straight to question three, I would like to share in your thoughts um, where we left up in question two. The consequence of Babylon not submitting herself to God. Before you get into addressing that, let's look also look at the period of succession in Babylon okay. and what happened in those days that led ultimately to the self-destruct that our brother was talking about. He, he went deep. Yes, sir. And uh, I would like to stay at the periphery. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Praise sir. the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, in that Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 6, God said he would choose Babylon. Yes, sir. But he specifically mentioned Nebuchadnezzar. Mm. And now, if you go a step backward, in Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 3, God told Judah, I've been warning you for 23 years mm. to leave iniquity, and you have hardened your heart. Jesus. I'm going to send Babylon to take you. Now, that 23 years that God was warning them, Nebuchadnezzar's father was still on the throne. In fact, he had not even ascended the throne hmm. because Nebuchadnezzar's father ascended the throne in 626 BC. Yes, sir. And died in 605 BC. Hmm. Now, he's, he ruled for 21 years. And Bible told us that Nebuchadnezzar took over Judah when, in his first year of reign. Hmm. So, what it means, if the father ruled 21 years, and God was warning Judah for 23, 23 years, years, which means he had already started warning them two years before Nebuchadnezzar's father took over. Took over. Mm. But God didn't give the assignment to Nebuchadnezzar's father. He said Nebuchadnezzar himself. Yes, sir. Now, Nebuchadnezzar had children. God didn't say, okay, in the time of Belshazzar, his or whatever. Uh, yeah, his son. In fact, it was not even Belshazzar that, you know, took over from his father. The person that took over was a man called Amel Madoc. In fact, the Bible recorded him as an evil Merodach, which is in 2 Kings 25 27. Yes, sir. God didn't choose them. God chose Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. The question is why? Mm. Now, that's why I said, let me stay on the periphery. Yes, sir. You know. If we look at Daniel chapter 2, when Daniel explained the dream to Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible said he came down from his throne and prostrated before Daniel, a mm. servant. Showing that when he started as king, he was humble. It is possible that that was the character God saw. I don't know. Mm. It is possible. Yes, sir. He prostrated. When he built the golden image, and God used Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to humble him, he still also declared, this is the only God anybody will serve in this nation. Mm. So he has a character that one could say maybe. Remorseful and always yes. dependent and acknowledging so, God. But the truth of the matter is that God decided it was him. Mm. Now the consequence was that, like I said, he ruled, this young man ruled for 43 years. Mm. 
then all his children from Ivo Maradaj to to the Neri Grisa. Mm. The Neri Grisa was his in-law that killed his son and took over. Mm. But that one ruled for only four years before Belshazzar took over. Now these people ruled for 23 years. But from the time Nebuchadnezzar died to that 23 years, they had multiplied gods hmm. in, in Babylon. Hmm. To the extent that they were worshipping stones, wood, whatever. Because if you read Daniel chapter 5, when Daniel said to Belshazzar, that's handwriting of the word. Mene, said, mene, take care of us. Belshazzar said, let us drink of this cup and worship the gods of wood, or rod, iron. See, they were Clean. all worshipping all manner of things. Mm. So it was not surprising that their end was due. And they became so wicked, hmm. so evil, you know, that the consequence of it was, it was, it was a, a, a determined destiny. Hmm. You know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like to, because we are still flowing in that same line of thought. Let me just connect question three to it so that you can also speak more on that. It is said that absolute power corrupts. Mm. How was that true of the kings of Babylon mm. and God's demonstration of his supremacy subsequently? Mm. You will help us with Daniel chapter 3, 1 okay. to 2, verses 4 to 6 and verse 16 to 18 quickly. And then I'll read verses 21 to 26. Bro, good will. Daniel chapter 5, 1 to 5, okay. and verse 25 to 31. Let's read all those and then still come back. Daniel 3, 1. Mm, yes, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its sweet 6 cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Okay. Verse 2. And King Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And four. then four to six. Then a herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded, O people, nations, languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image. Anyone that refuses to worship shall be cast in immediately into the burning fire furnace. And then 16 to 18. 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Mm. If that is the case, our God we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 21 to 26, quickly I read. Then these men were bound, that's chapter 3 of Daniel, in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he arose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered. I see four men, loose, walking in the midst of the fire. They are not hot, and the form of the fourth man is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servant of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the midst of the fire. Chapter 5, Bro Goodwill, 1 to 5, quickly. Belshazzar the king made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the presence of the thousand. While he tasted the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple which had been in Jerusalem, that the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Verse 3. Then they brought the good vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem. And the king and his lords 
his wives, his concubines drank from them. They drank, praised the gods of gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Verse, 20, 25. verse 25. This is the scripture that was written. Mene, mene, teke ufa sin. Verse 26. This is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Teke, you have been weighed in the balance and found one thing. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and they clothed Daniel with purple, and put a chain of gold around his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. That very night, verse 30, Belshazzar king of Chadon was slain, and Dairos the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. So let's stay question 3. Mm. So that you continue in that same thought, Brogidion. Absolute power corrupts. Mm. How true was this truth of the king of Babylon and God's ultimate demonstration of his supremacy? I think if you look at Nebuchadnezzar at a time when he tested success and victories over so many nations, the thing went to his head. Mm. He became proud. And so he felt he could do whatever he wanted. Yes, sir. And so he built a, um, a golden image and forced everybody to worship it. Mm. And we know how it ended mm. and all that. So for him, pride came in at a time in his journey mm. as a king. That is one. Then in the case of his own children, you know, at a time, his own children, because I, like I mentioned earlier, the immediate person that took over reign after he died ruled only for two years hmm. his in-law killed him in order to take over that one ruled for four, four years, years and was killed before he got to Neb uh, belshazzar and then if i don't want to go into historical yeah, arguments yes, because in history they said you know that is actually that belshazzar is not the direct son of nebuchadnezzar he was actually his grandson his father was a man called nabonidus Mm. But let's not go there. Yes, sir. Now, within that period, the Bible recorded Isaiah 46, verse 7 to 9, that these people became so vain, so immoral, and filled with pride. Hmm. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 6, they said within that period, they became so wicked, hmm. so mean, and dangerous. When they enter a city, even when you surrender, they will sell all your men to slave, into slavery. Mm. They mm. will kill everyone. Mm. That was what they were. And burn the city. They were so wicked. Mm. Now, that was how they degenerated. In fact, mm. Belshazzar, like we read in that uh, Daniel chapter 5, in fact, took the corpse of God from the sanctuary, from the sanctuary mm. and then was giving glory to man-made things. Mm. And so, the prophecies came. Uh, do you know that even before these things happened, prophecies were coming that Babylon will be destroyed. And they knew, because if you read that Jeremiah, Jeremiah 25, 26, 27, he said, go to Babylon and declare it. So it was not only in Judah they were declaring it, they were declaring it. So I believe, because the Bible said, he said to the representatives of these nations, tell them to go and tell their king. So God was not hiding it. Hmm. But still they hardened their yeah. neck until the destruction came. Jesus. God now said in Isaiah chapter 13, Jeremiah 27, Jeremiah 51, I'm going to completely destroy this place, that nobody will live in that place, yes, and nothing will remain. God said so. So the supremacy of God now hmm. is that uh, after the kingdom was taken, for years, other people took over, like uh, the, the, uh, Medes, uh, the Medes and Patient, the Patient King Darius took over, and then they destroyed the city. They tried to, you know, they didn't destroy it completely. But a man came up, Alexander the Great, in 33, 331 BC, 
and said, no, from the history I heard about Babylon and the thing, the great, how great it was, let us not destroy this place. Mm. We will rebuild it mm. against the prophecy of God. Mm. So he tried to rebuild Babylon mm. in 331 BC, mm. eight years after he died. Mm. And so when he died, then the Parthian nations came up and took over that side. Mm. Around 141 BC, they destroyed the whole of Babylon, burnt it completely. And, but at that point, people still knew that Babylon was here. Mm. Now, the Ottoman Empire came around 630 BC, after the death of Christ. That's just, that one is just yesterday. Mm. And just completely turned that place into, into a desert. Today, to know where Babylon is, you have to dig the ground, as archaeologists are doing around Iraq today. They're saying, Babylon used to be here. Babylon used mm -hmm. to be. So that prophecy of God eventually who came to pass completely that today, that place is a desert land, as God said, awesome. more than, more than 700 to 800 years ago, before it happened. You know, that for me is the impulse of where we are going. God said it, and it, it did come to be. You can battle with the Lord. That will say, the man that strives with his maker, Isaiah 45, mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. why will a man strive with his maker? Mm -hmm. Why will God elevate you? And then all of a sudden, pride comes into you, and then you set up yourself for destruction. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a phrase you use, and I jotted it down, until the destruction came. Child of God, I sense in my spirit that God will not want that destruction to come to you. But you are still battling with pride. It was hubris, it was arrogance that destroyed Babylon. You are still battling with pride. And sometimes you don't know how these things happen. You cry to God, you cry all of a sudden, you see yourself rising up in self-exaltation. Mm -hmm. God resists the proud. Mm -hmm. But the scriptures say he gives grace to the humble. And maybe you are watching and you are struggling with this pride. It's a vice, it's not even a virtue. You are struggling with it. Just a word of prayer that the Lord will deliver you from the spirit Amen. of pride. That spirit of Babylon mm. that sets up a man up for destruction. We want to pray with you that God will deliver you so that indeed you will humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Bro Gideon, briefly, just a word of prayer. Father, we ask that the grace to humble ourselves Amen. will come upon us and everyone that is viewing this program, that we will humble ourselves, even at the peak of success, Amen. we will know that promotion does not come from east or west, mm. but from God. Awesome. And that whatsoever a man has is given to him from above. Mm. And that nothing we can do by our own powers. Mm. Mm. Let this consciousness be in us at all times. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Finally, our time is fast spent. What can we learn from the rise and fall of Babylon? Bro, Goodwill, chapter 47 of Isaiah 5 to 9. Let's read only that scripture. Our time is okay. fast. Spent. Maybe if I get to, okay. Revelation 18, 1 to 2. Let me run through it. After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bed. Isaiah 47. Isaiah 47, verse 1 to 5. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for you shall no more be called tender and delicate. Take the milestones and grind meal. Remove your veil, take off the skirt, uncover the tie, pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered, yet your shame will be seen. I will take vengeance, I will not have betrayed with a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence, go into darkness, O daughter of bad Chaldeans, for you shall no longer be called the Lady of, of the Kingdom. Kingdom. Let's end it there. But I would like to encourage our viewers to also stretch that reading on your own to verse 11, so that you appreciate the context of what God is saying. Just in a word, what can we learn from the rise and fall of Babylon? What we can see is... 
every nation has a choice to make. Yes, sir. You can either rise for good hmm. or rise for bad. Hmm. Every individual also has a choice. You can rise for good or rise for bad. Hmm. In the case of Babylon, the moment its rise was for the uh, exhibition of wickedness. Its end was already determined. Yes, sir. The moment you find any nation brutal, wicked, immoral, vain, giving to things that are not, you can predict its end. Yes, sir. So you can predict what nations over the world that might look so mighty today, they are, they are good with technology, good with um, education, but they are very brutal. Any nation you see that is very oppressive, very immoral, doesn't know what is good and bad, it will surely fall. Mm. And it's also a lesson. The rise of Babylon tells you about the demise of the worldly system. In Revelation, God talks about another kind of Babylon that will possess the end time. The Bible mm. called her the mother of all hallows. Mm. We're in her age. She's driven by the desire for immorality, driven by the desire to kill those who love God, driven by the desire to control world governments. Mm. You see systems of the world following the same thing Nebuchadnezzar and his fathers followed. And that system is at work now and will also be at work until the, the days of the Antichrist f being fully manifested. But the Bible also says that modern Babylonian system will also collapse. Rumble. And as Christians, given in being born in this age, we must be careful to know that when we begin to see the things that was manifest in the days of Nebuchadnezzar manifest in our lives, we must know that is a warning that we are declining. When we see ourselves have different behaviors, Bible called the abomination that make it desolate. There are behaviors, there are lifestyle like pride, immorality, the moment it becomes a part and parcel of an individual or a nation, is an indication that the abomination that brings about desolation, desolation is near. Mm. And when Babylon went into vain and oppression, it therefore determined this end. It meant it was going to decline. Mm. In the days of Jeremiah, God, Je Jeremiah said, Ezekiel said, go. Go to the temple in Ezekiel 8. He said, you will see why I destroyed Israel, the image of jealousy. There were practices Israel had ventured into, like Babylon too, that guaranteed this fall. And Babylon is a perfect example of how a man can arise and fall. Yes. You can rise through oppression. You can rise through wickedness. God can even prophesy you will rise. Mm. But his primary goal is to humble you in the end. Mm. We as children of God should desire the other contracts. They are those who rise to be light of the nations. They rise to lift up the weak. The, the, those who are falling. Our desire is that Nigeria Let's should follow in that awesome. direction. Mm. And the church in Africa and beyond. Awesome. God indeed will help us. Uh, you want to <laughs> just... Just a, just a word. Yeah. I, I think... This scripture or this Bible study, yes, call, you know, makes us understand that it is God that promotes. Mm. If you look at where Babylon was when God picked him up, picked Babylon up, it was not actually a great nation. Yes, sir. Mm. But God made it great. So God can pick anyone from the dust, just like First Samuel chapter two, seven and eight said, mm. and put you among kings. But remember, it is God that did it. So how do you treat the house help in your house mm. now that God has lifted you? How do you treat people around you? Mm. He entered their head that it was their hands that made it. That made them. Actually, so it, was, this. It, was, it was obvious that they would end. So when you treat people around you, people who are under your influence, the way Babylon, Babylon treated, treated the nation, so it is obvious that you will not last long. So humility, I'm going to tie it up by saying, if you know where you started with God, Nebuchadnezzar bowed down to Daniel, a servant. When kings were seen as gods, he bowed down. That means he didn't consider, he, he saw the God of Daniel as the great God. Mm. Now you started with God, where are you with him today? Mm. 
very key because the day you leave him, you have already decided your end. Praise you know, the Lord. I think it was to the church in Ephesus that he said, I have this against you. You have forgotten your first love. Mm. You started with God. Where are you with God now? I mean, that's a poser. That's a question for us to reflect on. Do you know that Babylon actually was a second generation descendant of Ham, the second son of Noah? In Genesis chapter 10, we see all those. It was Cush that gave birth to Nimrod, who actually founded the city of Babylon. They had that background. Noah was there. Uh, in the line of their ancestry, there was a man called Noah, who the Bible recorded worked with God mm. in his generation. Mm. But this city at a point deviated. Still calling us back to the poser that our brother gave us now. You started with God. Where are you with him? Conclusion. Babylon was chosen by God as his tool to punish Judah and the surrounding nations. She later experienced God's judgment because she was found guilty of pride, mm. self-sufficiency, mm. and self-glorification. Mm. Everything here is self. Yes. Mm. And I see many of us struggling. Mm. Bible say, what do you have that you have not received? Mm. What do you have mm. that you have not received? She became a symbol of self-indulgence, luxury and wealth, seducing people into complacency. She was therefore rejected by God. Food for thought. The strength and weakness, rise and fall of any nation can only be, de be determined by the Almighty God. Let's take our memory verse together. Mm. And now, now have, have I given, given all these lands into, into the hand, hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the, the king of Babylon, Babylon my, my servant. servant. And, and the beast of the field have I given him also to Satan. A brother said, you have a choice to make. Either to be the one that will lift up others in righteousness. Or you can choose, but I advise you not to. To also be like Babylon. That God raised. Bible said Nebuchadnezzar, he called him a servant. But he deviated and started exalting in self-glory. I pray you not make that choice. Choose God and you will live. Amen. We want to thank God for today, for how far he's helped us in the course of today's study. And we are praying that this God who has spoken to us will fill us with his grace. So that in obedience we will arise and walk in the pathway of humility. Yeah. We're so grateful to our resource persons. Bro Gideon, thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Lines always will fall unto you in pleas and places. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 As the Lord lift you up, his mighty hand will sustain you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Bro Goodwill, for coming. Thank you. It's always insightful getting to learn some of these historical and biblical based teachings that always emanate each time you are with us on this platform. We pray that the Lord God will continue to uphold you and make lines fall in pleasant places for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Until next week, when I'll see you again, same time on this side, go out there and live righteously for God. Do not be like Babylon. God bless you. Mm -hmm.